to stocks. I sent Larry a list of some great, great stocks that I think are going to be the next 10 years Fang stocks. Y'all don't know what Fangs is. I'm talking about the Facebook, the Apple, the Amazon, that group of tech stocks that have made people 10 times what they invested into it a couple of years ago. There are some more on the horizon that integrate with those type of stocks. Take a look at this and then we'll break it down and go through what I think you guys should be doing in your portfolios. First up is $3.1 billion plural site, ticker PS, an AI-driven skills development platform that touches a lot of the developing trends. The company runs a skills development platform for online courses in the tech area, subjects like cloud, security, and data, everything a business needs. And the beauty of this is that proprietary machine learning assessment tool that, that helps businesses know which skills their employees need to work on. So when we talk about those themes and the industries to follow, you're going to see a lot of the plural site in here. We've got an algorithmic based functionality. Uh, we've also got online skills development, which is obviously hugely important right now, and an addressable market that gives the company a runway for growth for decades of growth. Pluralsight booked $317 million in revenue last year, an increase of 35% over the prior year, which in turn was 39% growth over the year before that. Now that's still just a fraction of the $42 billion market for the business technical skills development and the $300 billion plus for global e-learning market. Giving me even more confidence in this company is the fact that growth in the large customer segment has increased. Pluralsight has grown customer accounts in the million plus billion segment 122% over the last three years. The company has a solid balance sheet with over $406 million in cash against $567 million in debt. So that financial survivability that we like to see and very nearly cash flow positive. Next here is $2.3 billion stitch fix, ticker SFIX, and more of that consumer retail idea, but with a disruptor twist. Stitch fix is an online fashion service that touches a lot of those disruptor ideas that we'll talk about. It's an online retail service, which we know is bringing in billions of dollars from that traditional brick and mortar model every single year. The company estimates the online apparel market at over $111 billion in the US and the UK alone, and that's just a quarter of the total market. Online sales are expected to grow by 13% a year to over $200 billion by 2024. Stitch Fix isn't a retailer though. It's using a data-driven algorithm and that human intuition to help match people with their perfect look. Customers create a profile that assesses their preferences and then matches them with a stylist. Then it powers those retail services and delivers a product. The company booked 18% client growth last year and two consecutive years of 25% plus revenue growth. So not only are you growing the client base, but making more money per client. The company reported a 9% increase in active clients to $3.4 million in that March through May quarter. CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker CRSP, is a $7 billion gene editing company that has an old man, I'm definitely interested in seeing what they can do. Nation in the 100 years to 1900, the average life expectancy in America barely bunched, adding less than 10 years onto the average person's lifespan. In the 100 years to 2000, it almost doubled the 80 years old. We have seen the power of biotech in not just prolonging life, but the quality of life, and we want more. CRISPR uses patented technology enabling directed changes to genomic DNA, technology that could someday allow us to remove the parts of our genes causing cancer, diabetes, or even turning back the clock. The company has a strong pipeline, including collaborations and wholly owned techniques, five of which are just one step from being marketed products. This is moonshot stuff and CRISPR is the leader in the space. Now there isn't much there for revenue or earnings as you'd expect from an early stage biotech, but the company has $945 million in balance sheet cash and just $50 million in debt. So a pristine balance sheet and all the cash it needs to get some of that research through to sales. Those of you in the Bowtie Nation are gonna recognize this one, $9 billion Fastly, ticker FSLY. I first recommended Fastly back in November and then again in March when it hit $11 a share. It surged to $109 per share before giving up about 30% after it disclosed that TikTok has its biggest customer for about 12% of revenue. This is an opportunity to pick up more shares, even after that 800% return that we've booked since March. Fastly operates a cloud platform for content delivery, which is just a fancy way of saying it helps websites and the internet to you faster. It also provides streaming and video services, which puts it right in the middle of the biggest themes in the internet and media and a $35 billion market opportunity from its two segments. And while that quarterly earnings report sent the shares lower, there was still a lot to like here. The company swung to a net profit, which is always great proof of the business. Revenue jumped 62% from the prior year to $75 million, 
and it's expected to match that in the third quarter. Analysts are expecting full year revenue around $297 million this year and to double to $614 million by 2023. The company's revenue retention rate is an amazing 99.3% and not only are customers sticking around, they're also spending more with 133% growth in that expansion rate in the first quarter. So ladies and gentlemen, I will make this a standalone video so that you don't got to go back through, go back through this video and dig for an hour. But one of those companies, I'm kicking myself in the shin because me and Larry mentioned Fastly in March. And instead of buying them, I bought CrowdStrike, which has done well, but it just didn't do as good as Fastly. So guys, that's a good list of companies you should be throwing some money at right now to just sit on for the next 10 years. And for those of you following me during my options, I got stuck with Best Buy this week. I did my put option at uh, 116 and the price ended up 11, uh, 111.23. So now I was forced to buy the 100 shares, which is fine. I'm going to put those shares up for sale on Monday, higher than what I paid for them, and just wait and collect the premium week to week until the market goes back to that price or they have a spike. Simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. Larry, what have been your moves this week? And what did you think about that list? Yeah, the list looks good. Um, as far as my moves, I haven't really done a whole lot this week. Um, I plan on selling off some stuff. I did buy into uh, to what is that? To uh, um, Xping. Um, okay. Okay. The it's a it's a Chinese uh, EV car company that went public this week. So I bought a little bit of them. Um, I did too. I got some yeah, of them so too. I'm going to sit on them for a little while and see what they do. I'm probably going to sell off some of my, uh, I have, I have some stuff that are, I have a couple of things that are winners that aren't moving as much as I'd like them to. There are some things that are, um, there are some things that are losers that I was hoping would move and they're just not moving. If I, if I sat on them over a long period of time, they probably would, but I think I'm going to probably dump those on, um, on Monday, I probably should have dumped them already to free up the cash because on Monday, both Apple and uh, Tesla both start trading at their adjusted price from their splits. And mm. so mm -hmm. um, and so I think I'm probably going to pick up I'm probably going to pick up some Apple shares, probably more Apple. I may grab a share to a Tesla just to have it and see if it runs it back up. But I think I'll probably end up buying some Apple and um, and just holding on to it for a while. But um yeah, I mean, some of the, you know, some of the, the pharmaceutical techs that I've been looking at, I just sort of, you know, I see some of those move real quickly sometimes. And I really think that a lot of those are going to be great in the short term if you can get one that moves quickly. But I think as the pandemic starts to, if we actually get a vaccine and it starts to get under control, I think some of those will will start to level out. Mm -hmm. um, I think as a long term play, I think some of the pharmaceutical companies that deal with heart drugs, I think are going to be a big winner because we know there's going to be, you know, a, a whole generation of people. There's going to be, there's just, we're just going to have this whole COVID, you know, group of people that, you know, we're talking about 5 million plus that we know have tested positive. And that's not even all of the others, probably millions of others that have tested that are positive or had been and don't know it, but there's going to be a lot of people that, are going to develop heart conditions as a consequence that may never have had any heart disease before. So, you know, I think something like that may be a play, but that, I mean, that's, I think that's very long-term. Right. If, so. if, if I had to bank on two pharmaceuticals, ladies and gentlemen, my staples that I think are going to do well and are doing well now, Johnson and Johnson, you want to stick that in your portfolio and Merck. Merck is coming out with two drugs and one of them is supposed to be an oral drug for coronavirus. Those are the two horses I'm betting my money on in the COVID-19 race.